Well, I'm actually using a puller kit for a big roach at the moment. This is the fantastic Horseshoe Lake at Jubilee Pools, run by Lemton Sparrow Angling Association. And it's a, a clear and deep lake. And I'm gonna show you how to catch quality fish like this, hopefully a few tench and bream as well, on a deep venue like Horseshoe Lake here in the heart of Warwickshire. I'm sure I could fish with pellets or meat or corn or something like that today, but I've just come with a maggot caster and worm route and it's, it means I'll catch everything that swims, but also I'm confident of catching quality fish, especially feeding uh, a decent amount of casters. I've got three pints there. I've just got a, a three pint bait to full to the brim. I'd like to get through all of those today if the fishing's good. I've got a handful of red maggots just as a change bait purely optional really. I'm confident of catching on the casters to be honest. I've got a few dead maggots again as a change bait and then I've also got a handful of worms and eighth of a kilo of worms, um, a few full of hook and I've chopped some up as well nice and fine but to be honest it's, it's the casters that I'm, I'm hoping they'll get munching on and that's why I want to be putting on the hook maybe a maggot maybe a little bit of worm um, and to kick the to kick the swim off I've mi oh I've mixed up half a bag of ground bait as well just half a bag um, Anything sort of fish mealy, sweet fish meal is, will, will do, to be honest. Um, and I've just put in two balls like that at the start, two little golf balls. They're, they're not squeezed too hard because it's a slope. I don't want them to roll down the slope. I actually wanted to hit the bottom, um, either break up just before they reach the bottom or break down as soon as they reach the bottom. So they're not squeezed too hard. But I put two balls on like that with a handful of casters, a handful of bits and bobs, a bit of, a few dead maggots, a bit of chopped worm. And, and what I always do, especially when it's sloping, and as long as it's not towing too much, is I'll put a full pot of loose ground bait in as well. Just completely loose, I'll just press it down so it doesn't bounce out on the way out. And that'll just, that'll just cascade down nicely and that's gonna lay along the slope and it's gonna create a nice cloud on the way down as well. It's what I always do, it works for me ever so well. Anywhere where it's sloping. Um, to be honest, it doesn't have to be sloping, it's just something I do quite a lot. And as far as top-ups go, um, if I do top up the lines, then um, I've got some the same mix. I've got some dead maggots, casters and worms, but quite stodgy balls, just little balls like that. Very, very, very heavy, oversaturated, and they'll just bomb straight down. And hopefully you'll get a bit of like a vapor trail and um, the fish will just follow it straight down and you'll be able to put your hook bait straight over and get a bite. But what I expect to do is, is feed like, I don't know, a little ball like that, catch one fish, maybe two, and then have to repeat the process. I'm not expecting to feed like six, eight, ten balls of ground bait or anything, just two or three at the start, and then just topping up with one or two like that if I have to. But if I can catch shallow as well, I'll be loose feeding over the top and I'll just be loose feeding casters. So that's my options today. Not mountains of bait, but enough to keep a load of quality silverfish happy. Well, this is a big, deep, horseshoe-shaped lake, and I assume it's like a gravel extraction or something, but it's really deep, and the bottom's very, very higgledy-piggledy. I've plumbed up all over, and it's and it's, there's quite a bit of variation, to be honest. If I go further to my left this way, it gets deeper, and it gets a little bit shallower that way, and it doesn't seem to matter how far out I go, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I've done, I've elected for what I class as quite a comfortable depth for fishing on a deep lake, which is about 10 foot. Um, that means I can fish a long, a long top three, so a, a normal top two kit and a long number three section as well. And that equates to about 10 foot. And it means I can fish a nice big float. And um, I'd always fish a nice big float if I'm bottom fishing on a deep venue like this. This is a gram and a half. If it was windier or if it was very a lot more undertow, then I wouldn't hesitate to go up to two, two and a half, maybe even three gram. But gram and a half is a nice size. You can really sort of boss the hook bait and get it straight down, especially through if you need to get through any smaller fish in the upper layers. And just really, really positive. This is on 016 line. And um, 
I've got an olivet, what's that, about two and a half foot away from the hook, and, um, and then three number eight droppers equally spread above a six inch hook length. And the hook length is um, 010 power micron, and I've got a size 16 MXC5 hook. Um, and the beauty of this rig, one, I've got great big droppers, so it accentuates any bites. If anything's intercepted my hook bait on the way down, these number eights will really help to show that up. There's no point having like number 11s or even number 10s in this sort of depth of water, because um, I'm after quality fish and I'm using pr pretty big baits like worms, maggots, casters. Um, but I can also move all three shot down above the hook length as well and create what's called a double bulk setup and um, that can really accentuate your lift bite some days especially now it's sunny and quite clear those fish might go down pick the hook bait up and come back up again and you just get a nice big lift bite so um, I'll see how I, I'll start with it with three number eight strung out but I won't hesitate to bulk them right above the hook length and see if that will really help magnify the lift bites but to be honest because it's very clear and it's also very sunny I've just got a feeling these fish might want to come up anyway. So there's nothing you can do with your feeding to force them down. And I, it's easier to catch them with a shallower rig anyway. So, so I've got um, two more rigs. The first one is um, a very shallow. I've gone from a very heavy rig to a very light rig. And this is just a 0.2 gram um, Pablo RWC blade. Same make as, same design float as that, as my deep rig, but um, much, much smaller 0.2. And it's just got number 10s and number 11s. Um, at the moment, I've got them just bulked above a six inch hook length. Again, same line, same hook, same everything. Um, but I will spread them out as well. And I, and I can fish this rig anything from two foot deep to, to about five foot deep. And I've still got a foot of line above to, so, I can, um, so I can keep the pole tip away. But obviously the shallower I go, the more line I will get between my float and pole tip. And that's important because it's so clear and sunny. So if I am fishing two foot deep, I've probably got four foot of line above. And if I'm fishing three foot deep, I've got three foot of line above. Still plenty of line to keep the pole tip away. And you can flick it, flick your rig away from the uh, away from your pole tip and catch them backing away and everything. So uh, these have just got nice thin plastic bristles. And um, I've said already, I've got a 16 MXC one hook. I wouldn't go smaller than that. I'm fishing decent sized baits, but if you're missing lots and lots of bites, I'd actually go um, the next size up. I'd try a foot size 14, probably a size 14 MXC one, um, if I was missing lots of bites, because actually um, you need a big hook if you're missing bites. I've, I've made the mistake of going smaller, thinking that's why I'm missing the bites. Actually, you need to go the other way and put a much bigger hook on. Um, and both those rigs I've showed so far, I've got uh, my favorite six to eight slick elastic, absolutely brilliant for, for roach skimmers and they'll handle bonus fish as well. So uh, I've already had a tench out on this as well. So that's, that's fine. So that's for fishing shallow over the top. And I've also plumbed up a, a closer in swim as well. It's always important to have a line where you can just throw. I know there's a shelf about five, six meters here. Again, it's all higgledy piggledy and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of weed and everything. So I've just gone past that weed and it's about six foot deep. If it was a lot more colored, I'd come a lot closer in and try and catch him three foot, four foot of water. But it's so clear today. We've not had any rain for quite a while now that um, I've elected to go into six foot of water. Um, so I can use this rig again. I can potentially catch shallow there, but I've also got a rig, a 0.4 gram rig. And um, this is identical again, other than I've gone to an 011 hook length and a 16 MXC one. And also because there's more of a chance of catching a tench or a, or a hard fight inclusion, and I've got a lot of marginal sort of weed in the margins as well. I've gone for a six to eight slick, um, sorry, I've gone for an eight to 10 slick elastic. And to be honest, I could probably go up to a 10 to 12. We'll see, we'll see how, uh, how, how easy it is to bully these tench. Um, if they start messing me around, I'll go up to a red 10 to 12 or even the orange 12 to 14 slick. But that's the same, that's just a 0.4 gram float. I've kept everything nicely sort of strung out in the bottom half for now because it's clear. Um, I, I think those fish, even the tension that will watch the hook bait fall and then they'll intercept it. So um, if it was a lot more coloured, I'd just be fishing a bulk and a drop or a bulk and two droppers. But because it's so clear, you need to maximise sort of your full time and just catch those fish's eyes. So that's it. I've got three rigs um, and this rig as well, because it's six foot deep I, and um, I can use this rig as a deep shallow rig on my long line as well. And I've already caught some big roach on that as well. So I've got no problem fishing five, six foot deep. 
um, in 10, 12 foot of water, especially when bream are on the cards. Um, so yeah, I would happily use this rig again as a bagging deep shallow rig as well. So uh, that's it, three rigs and um, plenty of scope to fish top or bottom all the way through the water. Well, it's been a really slow start on the bottom, but I've missed about five or six just fast bites. And it doesn't matter how I lay my rigging, it's just shooting under. So already I'm thinking there might be some fish shallow. So let's pick up a shallower rig. Well, as you can see, it's really sunny. And because the water's so clear, I don't think fish like this want to go down they want to be up. They're like little solar panels. So uh, they want to be warming themselves up. And on days like this, it doesn't matter how you feed, I don't think you can necessarily push those skimmers down if they want to be up. So I'm capitalizing on that, loose feeding casters and trying to catch on caster shallow, anything from three to five foot deep in 10 to 12 foot of water. And uh, I started to miss a few bites, so I've just bought my rig just to see if that helps, and I've just had that decent bite. So, uh, but I will shuffle it between spreading the shot out and a bulk. Sometimes if you're missing lots of fast bites, just a bulk can be really, really good. And that's just literally six inches away from the, from the hook. And I'd say that's three and a half foot deep. But that worked for that bream, so hopefully we can catch a few more. And when they're that big, you don't need many fish. Yeah, another bream, I've just had two on the bounce like this. Three pound plus fish. Probably about three and a half foot deep again with that bulk rig. It's weird, I've been missing bites and as soon as you bulk the rig, you start hitting fish like that. <laughs> Cracking fish, absolute beauts. Stunning fish at this place. single caster plenty of hook showing don't bury it when you're fishing like this you want loads of hook showing that way you'll definitely connect with more bites and you need a really sharp hook as well I've just been laying it in it's just flicking it past the pole tip filling the pouch up you can be quite generous to be honest I mean I've got three pints of casters today and the way it's fishing, I'm expecting to get through all of that. It's a lot of bait, but there's a lot of hungry mouths up in the water that need feeding. I've tried just dinking in six, seven, eight casters, and uh, they want a bit of bait. They definitely want a bit of bait. But that's over two lines as well, so I'm just, I'm just dripping it in a little bit lighter on the short line, just where I can comfortably throw by hand. But it's just a case now of just juggling the depths just to try and find the optimum depth. And they will move up and down as, as the day wears on. So they'll come even shallower and, and uh, if the cloud moves over, they might come up again. Or if, if it gets really bright, it might push them down a little bit. But it's a case of just juggling it six inches at a time. You'll have little runs. Oh, I missed that one. If you start missing lots of bites, then that's, that's the cue to come shallow. If you're foul-looking fish, then obviously that's the other cue to come shallow. If you're not getting bites, just drop down another six inches and all of a sudden you'll be back in touch with the fish. It looks like the roach have backed off a little bit now and I think there's a few bream about. That's why it's gone a bit quiet. But I'm waiting a little bit longer, but catching a, a much bigger fish as a result. But even the roach in this place have been nice. So uh, I don't mind what I'm catching today.
Well, this is tench number three. It's trying its best to weed me. Okay, the weed stems aren't too, uh, aren't too strong, so it's pulling through a lot of the weed whenever I have had any trouble. Oh, he's trying his best, isn't he? They don't give up, especially with this sun out. I was thought it was a cruiser when I hooked him, but lovely tench. Oh, yes. Oh, he's a bit bigger than I thought, actually. Smallest one of the three we've had. Cracker. Look at that. Brilliant. Badoosh. It's really, really important to get all that slime off the line now. If you get the slightest little bit on the line, especially on a sunny day like this, it will glow up underwater and you won't get any bites. So just make sure you get it all off before you rebait. That was on double caster. Let's try that again. Well, I've had a great run on that long pole. It's been so enjoyable. To be honest, I've almost neglected this short line um but i've had a few fish whenever i've dropped on it missed a few bites a few little sharp bites and i've got a tench on looks like it's weeded me we just keep maintaining a bit of pressure there we are he's out again <laughs> and it's tench number four i probably could have just had a nice day catching short for these tench but i do like catching bream shallow on the on the longer pole no cruisions today, but we've had pretty much everything but. We've had rudd and hybrids and perch and great big roach, some lovely bream. And if I can get this in, I think it'll be a nice fish to end on. Although he is trying his best to uh, to weed me at the moment. But actually, this 8 to 10, once you bottom it out a little bit with the side puller, I've not felt undergunned. And I was quite surprised because they are scrappy fish. And I've not fished heavier than 011 either, so uh, I'm sure I could have fished heavier, but with the water clarity and everything, I've gone a little bit finer, and it's certainly uh, not been a problem. Come on, come to Johnny. Yeah, I think we got him now. Yes. Well, I love tench fishing. I love catching bream, catching quality fish on casters. And uh, yeah, he's probably the biggest fish of the biggest tench of the day. Cracking fish. And this venue, Jubilee Pools, is an absolute jewel in the Leamington Angling Association crown. And uh, fish like that, and quality fish like this, you can see why I was really looking forward to fishing here today. Well, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more videos like this on the Matrix YouTube channel and uh, hopefully plenty more sessions like this as well. well. There we are, that's half the fish we've caught today. Tench, bream, roach, rudd. The only thing we haven't had is cruisions, but I'm more than happy with what I've caught there. Quality fish from a deep venue and uh, you can't get fishing that's better than that in my eyes. Absolutely brilliant.